Hi everyone, Thunderous Models here, and today I want to show you how I built up Pegasus Hobby's Triceratops in 1 24th scale. Now, as was mentioned in its unboxing video, this kit only has 9 parts to it, and all of the parts are already off the sprue and essentially ready to go. I did need to take the back of a hobby blade and run it along a few seam lines as well as trim back some gate marks, but overall nothing too difficult here. In some places, I did lose a little detail doing this, so I just went back and carved those details back in. One thing to note about this kit is that it is vinyl and not plastic or resin. That meant that material was fairly easy to trim back and carve where necessary, but I was going to need to readjust how I approached gluing. Plastic cement doesn't work on vinyl, so I ended up using a combination of 5-minute epoxy and CA glue. Some notes about 5-minute epoxy. First, don't be dumb like I was here. You really should be using gloves with this. This stuff is no bueno if it gets on your hands. Um, not only is there the age-old issue of accidentally gluing something to your hand, but epoxy is extremely hard to remove once cured, um, and it can cause some reactions um, with your skin. So just do yourself a favor and just wear gloves. Secondly, you want to make sure that you fully mix the two parts. It's better to spend more time mixing and have a limited time to apply it than it is to apply it not fully mixed. If it isn't fully mixed, it may not bond well, and it can even cause it to not harden and leave you with a greasy or oily coating on your kit. Everything assembled pretty easily. The one piece that I did have a little bit of trouble on was the left rear leg. Um, even after trimming down the giant locating tab, it still didn't want to seat all the way in. You'll see in a minute how I tried to fix this with some putty, but it didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped it would. Once the epoxy had dried, I could start in on the puttying. For this, I used Tamiya Basic Type Putty, the gray stuff with the orange cap. Tamiya Putty can be thinned with either extra thin cement or with Tamiya's Airbrush Cleaner. Both are effectively the same product, um, and you can even use the Airbrush Cleaner in place of extra thin when cementing parts. All I do is squeeze a little putty into a palette and pipette some Airbrush Cleaner on it. I like to use a toothpick to stir it so I can break up any clumps of putty in the slurry. I'll then use the same toothpick to apply the putty slurry onto the seams that need covering. I'm much more concerned with getting the putty into the seam than I am about being messy and losing details, um, because while it's still wet, I can use Extra Thin's applicator brush to feather out and blend the edges of the putty. With deeper crevices, sometimes you'll need to apply more than one coat of putty, which is perfectly fine. One of the nice things about this technique is, so long as the putty hasn't cured, you can reactivate it with some Tamiya Extra Thin if you need to. Sometimes I'll notice that part of it hasn't dried how I was expecting it to, or see that I didn't blend it just right, uh, and this lets me fix that before the putty sets in. By doing it this way, you can skip needing to sand the putty altogether, which is extremely helpful for detailed organic subjects like this. I left the putty to dry and cure for 24 hours before I started painting. Once that was fully cured, I hit the whole model in Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000. The Primer Surfacers have a small grit to them that is perfect for covering up any small imperfections where the putty was blended into the kit, all but hiding it. The model then received a coat of Vallejo Game Air Cold Gray, 72.750. I would then add a drop of Model Air NATO Black, 71.251, and begin to pick out some patterning on the dinosaur's back, as well as shading some of the areas such as behind the frill, the sclerotic ring around the eye, and the fenestra. The outer portion of the front of the frill also received a light tracing of this darker gray. Now that these were all picked out, I added another drop of the black to darken the gray a little more. Using this, I would accentuate any shadows, add more variation to the patterning, and overall increase the visual interest of the rather monotone piece. And then I repeated this whole process one last time, this time adding two drops of the black. During this last coat, I thought it might be interesting to do something with the feet, so I gave the dinosaur some little booties. I don't know why, but it just seemed like something I should do, and I think it turned out rather nice. The final portion that would need the airbrush was the brightly colored display on the front of the frill. To accomplish this, I started by painting a large area in Vallejo Game Color Turquoise, 72.024. I then immediately added two drops of model color flat yellow to the mix, 
and using this new color, I painted roughly 90% of the turquoise area. This pattern would continue. Add yellow, paint 90% of the remaining area. Add yellow, paint 90% of that area, and so on. The slow change in color from turquoise to green to greenish yellow created a perfectly vibrant ombre that I'm just in love with. Now that the airbrushing was done, I could move on to hand painting the details. First, I painted the beak using a similar dark gray as before. This was followed by painting the tongue a mix of 4 to 1 red to brown. The eyes each were painted in flat yellow, followed by a dot of black for the pupil and the tiniest of white for the reflection spot. Both the black and the white dots were applied using a toothpick. You do want to be careful here and make sure that the eyes are relatively even, otherwise you'll end up with a cross-eyed dinosaur. Oh yeah, need to add the top beak on with some CA glue. Next, I picked out the toes in a 19 to 1 ratio of Vallejo Model Air White 71.001 to Vallejo Game Extra Opaque Heavy Gold Brown, 72.151. I would use the same ratio on the horns as well, figuring it was a good base for an aged ivory color. It did end up needing two coats to get full coverage, but that was sort of to be expected. To get the aged ombre on the horns, I used a technique similar to the frill display earlier. I would add a drop of Model Air USAF Brown to the palette, and while that second coat was still wet, I applied a new color to most of the horn, wet blending the color into the previous shade. I did this twice, then for the final portion, I used straight USAF Brown, still wet blending it into the previous color. Once the colors had dried, I gave the horns a heavy application of Alejo Game Ink Sepia, 72.091, using a gunk wash technique. Gunk washing is where you slather a piece in the wash, let it sit for a short bit, then take a paper towel and wipe the majority off. The wash stays in the recesses as normal, but it also slightly stains the base layer. And as you can see, I accidentally pulled one of the horns off. I reattached it with some CA glue and left the wash to dry. Once it had fully dried, I gave them a second gunk wash with the sepia, this time only applying to the bottom half of each horn. And then finally, the whole model got a coat of my homemade black wash. I usually reserve this one for scenery and dioramas because of how runny it is, but I think it works well with the natural nature of the kit. I made this wash with a basic Walmart black acrylic paint. Folk art, apple barrels, something like that. It was then just diluted with water and a few drops of dish soap to break the surface tension. While not ideal for models and figures, it's perfect for base work, scenery, and the backdrop of dioramas. And with that, I could move on to the base. I prefer to use these cheaper type acrylics for base work and dioramas since a lot is often needed and to be honest, it doesn't require the same level of fidelity, for lack of a better term. Here I started with Folk Art 944 Nutmeg as a base layer. Using the bottom side of a kit box as a palette, I thinned it with tap water and covered the whole of the base. Once everything was covered, I used a smaller flat brush to help wipe away any buildup of paint in details. Once this was dry, I randomly applied a wash of Vallejo Sepia to the base. I made sure not to cover everything, and I even used a paper towel to wipe up the excess and blend any harsher edges. I then did the same thing with Vallejo Mecha Weathering Oiled Earth, Citadel Shade Carolberg Crimson, and Citadel Shade Reichlin Flesh Shade. I set these aside to dry before moving on to the dry brushing. I started with USAF Brown to tone down how dark the base had gotten. Similar to the wash, I was a little random in how I applied it. I didn't go over everything in a consistent pressure or paint saturation. I then followed it up with a similar randomized layer of heavy gold brown dry brushing. And then a layer of Vallejo Model Air USAAF light gray dry brushing. Next, I could start in on the scenery portion of the base, one of my favorite parts to making dioramas. Although I guess technically this is a vignette, well, you know what I mean. PVA glue was applied in a couple of spots where I wanted to add in some more rocks. In this case, I used Natural Fine Talus from Woodland Scenics. 
A few smaller rocks fell in some places I didn't fully intend them to be, but that level of randomization works really well and we'll lock them in place here in a bit. I then placed some conifer blend clump foliage, also from Woodland Scenics, in a few places. Here I just dipped them in the PVA glue and pressed them into place. Sometimes these would break up along the way, whether when dipping in the glue or moving them with the tweezers, um, but in these cases I just opted to use them as the smaller pieces. It still works all the same. The next item I used was some JTT Scenery Products Landscape Lichen. This stuff is just harvest lichen that's been treated and it makes for some great prehistoric plant life. I tore a larger lichen into two pieces, and for the first piece I put some Woodland Scenics Liquid Pigment Burnt Umber in a cup and dropped one half in to soak before placing it on a piece of paper towel to drip dry. While that dried, I glued the other half in place on the base and brushed some Citadel Shade Athonian Camo Shade all over. This greenish brown would differentiate the lichen from the other and bring some nice variant color to the base. The first lichen was then glued in place and it was time to affix everything. Woodland Scenic's Scenic Cement is perfect for this. Just use a dropper to cover everything you want affixed in place. The final item I wanted to add to the base were these little tufts of static grass from Army Painter. These are their Wasteland Tufts color and they come in three sizes on the sheet. You simply peel them off and place them where you want, and an adhesive on the bottom locks them in place. Now, I do have static grass, but no static grass applicator yet, so for now these do the trick. And while I know that the little circular bits of grass don't necessarily look completely natural, you can double them up to get some irregular shapes, and that'll do. Overall, I'm quite happy with how the base turned out. And there we go! One Triceratops from Pegasus Hobbies complete. Oh man, what can I say about this kit that I haven't already? Uh, it was such a joy to complete. The simple build meant that I could really focus on my paintwork, um, and I think that it turned out very well. There was a lot that I sort of experimented with in this kit. Um, the horns in particular were a spot that I was super nervous about before I began. Um, to be honest, I had no idea how I was going to approach it, and I just sort of winged it. And the base, that was another trust the process type thing. You know, as many times as I've done this, I always get worried about halfway through that I've ruined it somehow. But tell me, what do you think? And would you like to see more dinosaur models on this channel? I've had my eye on the Pegasus Hobby Spinosaurus for a little while now, and I'd love to give that one a shot. Maybe something with some reds and purples being the predominant colors? Well, anyway. Thank you to my gift set tier patron, Cali Bear. And thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and all of that down below, and leave a comment. I always do answer each and every comment that you all make. If you enjoyed this build and would like to see more of my content, maybe give this video here a try. And until next time, stay safe and keep modeling!